After digging into PS5 settings, I found a few options that can affect your PS5 performance, especially the delay of your controller in games and boosting the reaction speed after the latest updates. First, let me give you an understanding of how many kinds of input lag we have on PS5. The first one is the delay between the controller and console which is caused by USB or Bluetooth known as idle input delay. The second one is the delay which is from the moment the console receives the controller signal to the moment it works in the game, known as the game delay. The third one is the delay that is caused by frame rate and frame drops, known as performance delay. Recently, I was thinking about whether haptic navigation feedback affects controllers' input lag in games. I tested it in code and based on 40 tests I made on a stable polling rate, the input delay reduced in code on average by 5.9 milliseconds. This is huge. I mean the same option in Valorant helped me to get as close as 2.1 milliseconds on average with edge. Yet in code, it's crazy effective. It somehow reduces the idle input delay probably. You know, I've seen things such as when you connect a headset to your controller, even if you don't use it and switch output to HDMI, it still reduces controller input lag. It makes sense to me in a way. When the console is under more pressure and more data is requested, whether for mic, headphone, or haptic feedback, the console forces itself to request a higher polling rate to maybe keep it in sync with the controller without increasing the input delay. That's my take. So it can effectively reduce the delay. But much more research is needed to prove what I'm claiming. Right now, I suggest having this option on if you want a significant and noticeable reduced idle input lag on PS5. The next one is high contrast settings. Having this option on based on the test I made in a few games such as X Defiant, COD and Overwatch 2 helps reduce overall input lag up to 3 milliseconds. The next option is reduced motion settings. What I realize is if you use reduced motion, it can indirectly affect the input lag up to 5 milliseconds based on 40 tests I made. The best would be keeping only high contrast on or keeping all those accessibility settings off. Both of them will give you the lowest input lag. The next option is HTCP inside system settings. This option is necessary for when watching movies or playing music, but for gaming regardless of your TV or monitor model, it can add 2 milliseconds up to 24 millisecond input lag depending on the game and output refresh rate. I suggest keeping it off. The next thing is hard to prove as we recently started testing them, and that is account based input lag, which you can check in the video from the card above. Someone mentioned if you change your PSN account settings to default such as privacy settings etc, it will fix that account based input lag. I did test it in my main account and here are the results I've got specifically in COD. So in the account settings I chose the profile social and open even though I don't like that. I applied it and afterward I restarted my PS5. The average delay I got didn't change at all, but the jitter was less by 4 milliseconds on average. So instead of having for example 5 and 15 and an average of 10, it was 8 and 12 which goes to an average of 10 again. Yet it's not enough of data because it was tested on my PS5 with my account and in a limited test. Much more research is needed to prove the research. But give it a try and let me know if you feel any difference. The next one is based on the network. Make an internet connection test on your console and if you see this error for packet fragmentation, go to your network settings, advanced and change M2 to 1500. If you still get this error, call your ISP and ask for their help with your router. This can cause buffer bloat and other problems that make your game laggy. If you wonder what buffer bloat is, check my recent video on why your game is laggy even with low ping. The next part is BT versus USB. In ideal situations when there is no interruption with BT, Bluetooth connection is faster for DualSense due to having a higher polling rate, while for DualSense Edge, USB cable is faster. If you were always playing with cable because you thought that's faster, give Bluetooth a try. If you felt more lag, maybe move your router or other BT and 2.4 GHz devices away from PS5 or try to change the band frequencies and switch between channel 1, 6, 11, etc and you will find an option that doesn't interrupt PS5's Bluetooth. 
otherwise USB is consistent and better if you can't do those. Some of you recently mentioned we feel better with lower resolution despite knowing PS5 does upscale anyway and then downscale in most cases. Your controller delay is typically higher whenever you choose lower resolution, especially in 120Hz games. But depending on your TV or monitor input lag, maybe your picture input delay is much lower in 1080p. And that could be one of the reasons it feels better to you. Picture input lag is even more important than controller. As I told you, there is a kind of lag that is caused by FPS drops and changes in performance. If you want to know how to improve PS5 performance for any game, check this video on the screen. I'll catch you there.